Hey there YouTube, Barnarth Racing here. So notwithstanding all the great work we did to build version 2 of our CNC lathe conversion project, there's still one aspect of it that I'm not fully satisfied with, and that's this part right here. The way I mounted the stepper motor to the cross slide or the x-axis was to just fabricate a quick and dirty mount that attached the stepper motor via a pulley to the normal manual cross slide. And that means that I used the original lead screw and the original way of mounting the lead screw to the cross slide. Unfortunately, the way Wabeco manufactured their cross slide was just a solid Zamask bushing with a grease fitting in it with no bearing and no real locating mechanism. So it's not really suited to high speed CNC operation. It needs to be replaced with a bearing. So I built one. I designed a custom aluminum mount that uses a standardized FK10 lead screw support bearing, and that replaces the OEM Zamask casting so that now it bolts into the same place, but provides a bearing instead of a bushing to support the lead screw. So the natural next step would be to go ahead and find a ball screw to replace the lead screw that was used previously. Unfortunately, there's just not enough room inside the cross slide to fit a ball screw of any maker manufacturer. There's very, very little room in there, and that means I'm left using the M10 by 1.0 thread that the original lead screw uses. So I cut up this shaft that you see here, and because I don't trust single point threading on my lathe yet, I did it the hard way and I cut the threads on with a die. And that was a disaster. As you can see here, Ain't no way, no how you're getting precision work out of that thread with that much wobble. I don't know how that happened, but it did. Clearly, we need a more accurate way to cut threads. And luckily for us, thread rolling exists. You send your shaft off to somebody else, they put it through their thread rolling machine, and you come back with a very precisely formed thread. Just like you see here in this demonstration video. However, the thread rolling people have very, very specific and tight tolerances that you need to be able to hold in order to have their process work. So that means I have to cut blanks that meet the thread rolling specifications. So here we go. So here we have the SolidWorks assembly of the part we've designed. Yes, SolidWorks, not Fusion. More on that later. Anyway, here is the lead screw right here. Then we have the bearing block. And then finally we have the pulley, right there. So let's pull this up in master cam and do our cam. So here we are with the part loaded up in master cam for SolidWorks. We'll just go ahead and turn it on. There's our chuck, there's our part. You can see the stock there. And let's have a look at some of the tool paths. So first we're gonna rough out the long section. I'm actually going to do this in MDI mode. I'm not going to do this with code generated by Mastercam. Mastercam I'm going to use to do the trickier parts. Like this part when we zoom in. We need that thread relief and the radius there. So here we go. A roughing cut to get us close. And then we'll follow that up with a finish pass to do the final profile. And I'll actually run that twice on the machine. Then we have to do the chamfer on the end. Zip, and we're done. So that's operation two. I'm gonna run it the other way around. Let's go ahead and try operation one. So operation two is this area right here, which is mostly just steps in one chamfer. So I'm gonna do this all in MDI mode. Let's go ahead and cut it. So step one is to indicate the stock in the four jaw chuck to make sure we've got it as centered as we possibly can. So we're just gonna run this indicator in, Turn it over by hand and see how badly out of center we are. Okay. 
And that's pretty bad. We gotta fix this. A few moments later. That's a lot better. It's not perfect, but it's as good as we're gonna get. So let's go ahead and cut.
A few minutes later...
So after all that, how do we make out? Well, as it turns out, we wound up with five blanks, each of which was to the limit of my measuring capability within the specs demanded by the thread roller. So we're going to send these things off and see how they turn out. And inshallah, out of the five, one of them is going to come back usable. So tune in next week and let's see what happens. Nope. Psych! One of the side effects of me being lazy and not really getting on a schedule for these videos is that sometimes I put it off long enough for the product to come back. And here they are. And they all came back with threads on them, so I guess the blanks were all good enough. Let's have a look under the microscope. So what I'm doing here is I've got it underneath a USB microscope, and I'm just rotating it like it would be in the lathe. And so what you're seeing is the peaks and valleys in the thread, and you can see how smooth and regular they are. And that's awesome. By way of comparison, here's a still shot of some threads that I cut with a die. You can see how torn up and janky they are. The thread rolling is just way, way better. So that sets up assembly of the final bearing block and motor mount, seen here in comparison to the OEM lead screw mount, which in turn sets up assembly of the entire motor pulley belt screw assembly, seen here. And the final test, four consecutive jogs of 10 thousandths each up against the indicator to see what happens. So there you go, the most accurate part I've ever made with this lathe. We are now hard up against the right art marker for what this thing can do due to the amount of flex that's in the chassis. But for now, I think I'm at a point where I can do more with this lathe other than just make lathe parts. And that's a success. Well, thanks for watching. Ding ding around one. Ding, ding, round one. Now the battle's begun. Ding, ding around.